Well, hello. I want to start this week's Real Love Revolution video with a question. Do you feel like you date the same person over and over again? The same wrong person over and over again? Or are you in a relationship and you feel like you are repeating the same fights? It's sort of like being in Groundhog Day where you can't seem to figure out how you get here again, whether it's being in the same relationship that doesn't go anywhere or that makes you unhappy or in a relationship where you just continuously have conflict over the same exact things. My name is Terry Cole. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a relationship expert, and the founder of the Real Love Revolution. And this week, this Monday, is the last video that you will get before the Real Love Revolution course actually opens. It starts on February 1st, which is this coming Wednesday. So many of you have been writing in. I've been doing a lot of master classes, teaching this work, and so many of you want to talk about your love blocks and you want to learn about your love blocks. So today in this video, I'm going to teach you all about your love blocks because once you move them out of the way, you can either have a happier relationship for the one that you're in, or you can stop wasting your time dating the wrong person over and over again. So let's get started. What are love blocks? Where do they come from? <clears throat> Well, I've been a relationship expert for almost 20 years, and what I've come up with, what I've decided, what I've figured out is that so much of what happens in our lives, in our love lives, has to do with old material, things that we've learned, behaviors that we've learned from the, our family of origin, right? From the family that we grew up in. And so this isn't, um, we're not going to be blaming anyone. It's not about making your family wrong. It's about understanding that you are the way you are in love for a reason. It isn't like something's wrong with you or you don't, there's nothing wrong with you, right? You just don't understand yourself enough to change inside what's driving you to repeat these patterns that don't work for you. But you can learn. It's like, it's like pulling back a curtain and going, oh, so that's why? When you know better, as Maya Angelou would say, you do better. So let's just talk a little bit about what the love blocks are and the most common ones that I've seen. How you can figure out who you attract romantically is that we do a combination of your attachment style, which I'm gonna get into, and your love blueprint, like your romantic blueprint. And that is really from your family of origin. So if we start with your attachment style, um, this is something, and if you want to grab a pen, you can write it on down so that you can sort of put this information together for yourself and see why you're attracting what you're attracting or why you're repeating what you're repeating in your current relationship. So the first attachment style is a secure attachment. So if you are securely attached in your life, and it doesn't mean to one person, it means this is your style of relating to other people. And it stems from your childhood and the way that you were treated and the things that you saw. But in the end, this is this is what we end up with, or the which are attachment styles. If you are securely attached, it means that you can talk about the way that you feel and that you don't have a problem sharing your feelings in a relationship and that you have the ability to stay meaningfully connected to other people. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you figured out the love thing because there's more than one element that um, creates how we love in our lives. This is just one of them. Securely attached people are the people in relationships who you can count on. They keep their word. In some ways, they know who they are. But if you are securely attached and you have high functioning codependency or codependent tendencies where you overfunction and you do too much, you may attract other attachment styles who are less secure, like the other two that I'm going to tell you about right now. So the second one that we're going to talk about is being anxiously attached. If you're anxiously attached, it means that if you're in a relationship, you're very preoccupied with your partner. You are always thinking about where they are and what they're doing. You're worried that you want the relationship or that you're more interested in the relationship than your partner right? Anxiously attached people, if this is your attachment, you actually do very well with securely attached people because they're trustworthy and 
they can show up and they don't have this unconscious thing happening that makes them want to run away from their relationship. So an anxiously attached person connecting with a securely attached person, they can be less anxious and sort of stay in the relationship. But unfortunately, a lot of times, anxiously attached people will be attracted to the next attachment type, which is avoidant. If you are an avoidant person, you equate intimacy with loss of, sorry, I don't know why my phone is on, um, with loss of independence. So you really want um, intimacy and you want to be in a relationship, but you are also afraid of it. And the moment you start getting into a relationship that's actually truly intimate, you feel suffocated and you want to get out. You'll find a lot of avoidant personality types on the dating scene, on the, like the left, right, swipe app scene, because short-term relationships are really their specialty. That That is what they do best at, even though it may be very frustrating. So why does it matter your type? Well, first of all, there's many things, and um, you know, I'll have links below. You'll, you'll be able to, um, on the, the page on the website, you'll be able to follow and learn more about this. Because when you think about it, when you know your attachment style, and listen, none of us fall exactly into this, the description of the attachment style, right? You will have a primary attachment style, and then there'll be other parts of you. You may still feel anxious, but actually be able to be securely attached in a relationship. This is just a guide so that you can start to look at, oh, who have I been attracting? And what is the dance that I do if you are in a relationship? What is the dance that I'm doing in this relationship right now? Right? What does that dance actually look like? So you may have the stepping forward and stepping backwards in the dance, which is very common, um, where you step towards the person. And if they're an avoidant, if they're avoidantly attached, they will really step backwards because it's incredibly threatening to them. So I just think it's helpful to know your own, have an idea of your attachment style, because now we're going to connect it with um, your blueprint, your love blueprint. So let's talk about that. I teach a lot, and many of you, if you follow me and you know my work, um, I talk a lot about your, your love blueprint. And basically, I named it that because it's like an architectural blueprint for a house that someone else designed maybe generations ago that just keeps getting handed down from generation to generation. And if it goes unexamined, it makes you think that becomes your reality. So a little bit, I'll give you a little story about my own um, downloaded love blueprint that my um, parents were married because my mother was pregnant. They were high school sweethearts. And then my mother worked for a year to put herself through college because both of my parents were raised, for, they were very poor growing up. So she worked at the GE factory um, for a year to save money so she could go to Oneonta. And she found out that she was pregnant over Thanksgiving break. Now you can imagine um, that was a major bummer. And she did not go back to school. My parents got married. My father, of course, he was going to Union College. He finished school. Um, and then my, they had four daughters very quickly in a row and I was the fourth daughter. Now, what I didn't say about my father was that he was a star athlete. He did not have a very high emotional IQ, although he had a very high regular IQ and intelligence IQ. And he definitely could have used a son like that's, he was a, a star athlete. He really could have used a son, but he ended up having me as his last chance to have a son. So what was downloaded for me was that marriage didn't look like all that much fun, actually. Uh, my parents didn't fight. There was high functioning alcoholism in the home that I grew up in. So that's more with my father. It was more emotional neglect. My mother was more of an enabler with my father's drinking. Um, but what I really, what really impacted me was the covert and the overt messaging from my mother which was get your education on girl <laughs> so that love can be a choice and not a need. And I was like, yes, please, I, I want to do that. 
And what I also saw was that whoever made the money had the power. And I was like, well, I will definitely be the one to make the money. Um, it's, um, you know, be great. So the other person can make the money too, but I was never going to find myself in this situation that my mother was in where she felt very trapped. She had these dreams and these ideas of what she wanted to do with her life, and then she couldn't do them. So I, it made me really want to do everything, every dream, and, and that's really what happened. So I ended up having this limiting belief about love and marriage that I couldn't have both. I thought, well, I'll just create this massive career, this amazing, awesome career, and since I, I don't think love lasts anyway, and I don't want it because it doesn't look great anyway, I'll just have this career. And it was also a way to prove to my father that I would be more successful than any stupid son that he could have had. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that, that, that was what I was going on. So keep in mind, you guys, I wasn't aware of this, right? I wasn't like, oh, here's my downloaded love blueprint. It's not really like that. It can be different. I was young. And that was all I had seen it with modeled behavior. So how that played out in my actual life is that I just kept falling in love with men who lived in on other continents. And what was so funny about it is that I couldn't see the connection between that they were, they were geographically unavailable as my father was emotionally unavailable. But I actually couldn't see that they were the same because the men that I would fall in love with or get into a relationship with were men who were very verbally affectionate, which was very different than my father, very physically affectionate, very different than my father. So in my mind, I was like, these guys are nothing like my father. Thank God, you know, but of course they were because they were actually and ultimately unavailable as was my father. So there's this repetition that we repeat these things that we see. And that is the only guide that we have. So anyway, I tell you that story. Um, and I'll just give you the PS and the end of the story, obviously, because I didn't continue to date unavailable men because I'm happily married for the last almost 20 years. So I got into therapy at a very young age, in my early 20s. And through this process, years, right, of this process of getting to know myself around other things. I mean, I had a lot to handle prior to dealing with my downloaded love blueprint, which was I stopped drinking. Like I had many other things that were, were more um, prevalent or primary for me to handle. And then when I got to the part about the, the love blueprint, which of course I named it that afterwards, but when I started unpacking this with my super brilliant therapist, Ruth, thanks Ruth, um, I realized that the way that I was thinking about love was not the way that it actually was. It was simply the way that it was for my parents. And it was so incredibly liberating when I realized that I could actually create a different experience. And that if I didn't like the hand that I had been dealt in life around what I learned. And this is again, not to make my parents wrong. They were like two kids from upstate New York. They did the very best that they could. And they loved us a lot. That this is, that's great. You know, it's not about blaming your parents. When you're trying to figure out your life, you guys, when you're trying to figure out love, it's not a disloyal thing to do. It's actually a very kind thing to do. Because then you don't, then you don't have to be resentful about what they didn't didn't teach you and what they didn't didn't show you and the ways that they failed you because they all fail us just like I failed my kids just like my husband failed or like this is life being a parent and as long as you can just be sorry of for the ways that you failed your children and don't stop doing those things whatever it is that's all you can do as a parent is the very best that you can and be willing to be sorry for the ways that you fail them because you will and then they will have children and they will fail them in their own ways. And hopefully every generation does it better. And that's all, that's all, that's all we can say, you know? So anyway, moving on, I had, I realized when I realized that I had the opportunity to change it, to do it better, I became obsessed with figuring out why I was repeating these patterns. We unpacked the crap out of it in my therapy and within six months, I met the man who would become my amazing, awesome 
talented, generous, kind, hot husband. And that was almost 20 years ago. And I don't think I ever would have recognized Vic as my person if I hadn't unpacked all of that crap and all of that misinformation that I had seen and observed. So, wow, that was a long way around the barn to get to your love blueprint. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And don't worry, you'll be able to download this as a little sort of cheat sheet so you can answer these questions yourself. The first one is, how was your parents' marriage? That's the first one. <laughs> Were your parents divorced? How was the communication in the marriage? And don't worry, I'm going fast because you don't have to do this now and you're going to be able to download the little cheat sheet so you can do it later. You're going to need time. Trust me, this took me years to know. Um, was there affection between your parents or in the home you grew up in? Was there violence? And this can be between your parents or if you have a parent like like in, in my, my life, I, I married a widower. So when I say my children, these are the children that I married basically. And I like to say it was perfect for everyone. No stretch marks. It all worked out the way it was supposed to work out. Because I don't think I would have been a very good mom or mom figure to little kids. But I think that I was pretty good for, for young teens, which is when I came into these guys' life. So I have three sons. And I've got five grandbabies. So, yeah. it's I, I highly recommend it, you guys. You single women out there, I highly recommend I'm not saying look for a widower because it's completely tragic, someone being a widower, but it really worked out for us. So back to your downloaded love blueprint. Who had the power in the relationship? Was it a single parent home? If it was, did your, did your parent um, date? You know, what was that experience like for you? And then how were you regarded in the home, right? <clears throat> Did you feel loved and valued? Did you feel marginalized? Did you feel ignored? Were you abused? Were you screamed at? Because all of these things impact your love blueprint. And what was your culture? Your, your family culture, right? Did a lot of people stay married? Did a lot of people not stay married? And what was your, um, like, did they, how did they hold marriage? Did they hold it in high esteem? Or was it something like in my family system where I grew up, my mother, I got the feeling, my mother was slightly a male basher, not terrible, but not great. And I got the vibe that men were people to be managed, but certainly not people to like be your best friend or someone to relate to in that way. No, definitely not. So that had everything to do with me not knowing how to be myself in a romantic relationship because I could only be myself. I thought it was only appropriate to be myself with my girlfriends. And, you know, I had a great model of, you know, friends for life. I have the same friends that I've had since I was four years old um, and because my mother had the same set of girlfriends. And I, have, I mean, other friends I picked up along the way, obviously. But <clears throat> those are blueprints as well. How are friendships regarded? Are people trusted? Do you make a heart connection with them? Do you let people in? So these downloaded blueprints that I teach in all these classes that I do, they're, they're about everything. You have a downloaded blueprint about finance, about health, about wellness, about sex. Right now, we're just talking about your, your love blueprint. So when you put together these two pieces of information, which is your attachment style and answering those questions for your love blueprint, what you will get is a much more clear idea of why you are the way you are when it comes to love and awareness is the first pillar in the real love revolution to figuring out how to attract and sustain real love in your life and then the second pillar is self-knowledge and the third pillar is self-acceptance and the fourth pillar is self-compassion which everyone needs to work on more and the fifth pillar gets us to self-love and self-celebration. So I wanted to share this with you because so many of you have been writing in about it. And I really want you guys to figure out the love thing. I really, really do. So if you um, have not done any of these master classes with me, today is Monday. And I actually have two master classes tomorrow. So all of that information, if you want to sign up, for the masterclass so you can learn more about this 
They're both tomorrow, which is Tuesday, January 31st, 2017. So if you are watching this after the fact, there will still be a link where you can join my Real Love Revolution group. So it's online and Facebook, but the actual course this time around is starting February 1st, 2017, which is Wednesday. But the um, master classes that I'm teaching, one is for people in relationships who need help sort of bringing it to the next level or making a decision, should I stay or should I go? And the other is for all the single ladies. And as much as I love you men out there, this course is only for women. So just know that I am making a course for men and it will come out in 2018. But right now, the Real Love Revolution is only for the ladies. So I'm super psyched that you joined me today. I want you to download the cheat sheet and do it so that you can figure out what your love blueprint is all about and how you may be getting in your own way. I hope you guys have an amazing love filled week. And as always, take care of you.